Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. At Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And today we have a special Bear Wozniak Adventure with my son, Jeremiah Wozniak, sharing with Heather Makowitz of Peak Encounter Ministries and young Ava, a 2020 graduate, about an 85-foot wave that he abandoned himself to, that he surfed in, and what life and spiritual lessons he can be applied from what he learned surfing huge waves. This is a perfect show for fathers to share with their children and for young graduates to listen in on as Jeremiah shares his riveting story. This conversation will inspire everyone, but especially young graduates, as they paddle into a whole new adventure in their life, as they seek to know God's will and abandon themselves to it. Jump in with us now. Jeremiah has already begun to talk about his peak encounter at the apex of the wave. Let's listen in. Really like it's it's cool that you say that because if you think about like surfing, you know, uh, you, you're kind of like uh, the apex you're talking about. It's very similar, you know, because if you're on a wave that's smaller, um, when you catch that wave, you can feel that initial push, but you're not really going to feel it like if you're on a on a larger scale. So it's like um, when you're toe surfing, they, you're being dragged by the jet ski, and then and then the wave is kind of forming underneath you. You don't really know where the, the apex or the pinnacle is going to be until until that thing is to the point where you know it's going to start breaking, or, or and you're going to be right in that pinnacle at that moment. And uh, it's it's kind of cool because it has like a, it's kind of like a metaphor for faith because you're being towed by this jet ski and you're going really fast and you know this way is building and building and building and building, but you just have to have faith that your driver or in like, if it's God, he's pulling you into that perfect spot that once you get to that point or that apex or that pinnacle, you're going to feel, you're going to feel that, you know, when it's time to let go and when it's time to just completely abandon, um, you know, let's say that the Lord's saying, Okay, I'm pulling you into this this part of your life right now, and then I'm gonna, you know, you got to be ready for it. And then there's a point where the Lord just kind of says, "All right, now it's it's in your hands." You know, like we've trained for this, we practice, we've worked hard. You have the faith, you have the skill, you can do this. Hmm. And then, and then He's gone, but you're riding His creation, so you're still right in that perfect spot where the Lord wants you to be. You know, so it's like it's like a, maybe like a father dropping his son off at school the first day or something like that, you know? You're like, you're ready for this, you know? And this is going to be good for you, so. Um, no, <laughs> and um, it's so hard sometimes to think, like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do with my life? Like, where, do, where should I, what should I do next? Lord, help me. Give me a sign. And it's like, um, you know, the Lord loves you, and he, he gave you that heart, and he gave you the, the – um, the desires, you know, like my dad says, you know, the desires of your heart. There's a reason why, you know, you say trust your gut or go with your heart because it's like it really is just like embedded in us. And and when you go, gosh, what am I going to do? Like, you know, what's my next step? It's like it's like just just seeking that or just um, focusing on on that. It, it's like the little things and the every day to day things, the little tiny things are what grow into these enormous things. And, and, you know, like when I, when I first moved out here in 2004, I was just out of the Navy and I had like a, a, like a few unlucky things happen where I was homeless for a while, you know, and I was working as like, I was like selling vacuums. I was working at a, at a grocery store. I was doing all these odd jobs and everything, but, it's really cool because when I was in the Navy, I learned that I'm not working for any boss. I'm working for the Lord, you know, and to have that heart of the servant and to just try to be your very best at whatever it is. If you're washing dishes, be the best dishwasher you could possibly be, you know, because 
like I said, you're doing it for the Lord and he's there all the time watching you and seeing you put your heart into something. And, and, um, it's tough, you know, it's really tough, but, uh, as long as you just keep focusing on being that like heart of the servant and just like giving to God and, and, you know, serving others, um, I think that eventually, you know, you find that you have that aha moment, as they call it, you know, <laughs> and, and there's many aha moments, you know, it's beautiful to get to grow and to keep going and mature and to see what's around the next bend. Um, but yeah, it can be so difficult sometimes, like even just like right now, like I moved out here, my wife's still in Florida right now. And she's going to join me in like a month or so, but I'm kind of taking a leap of faith out here because, you know, there's uncertainties, but Last year, I took a leap of faith. We both moved out to Puerto Rico to go work out there. And then a year later, we got let go. And we're like in this position where we're like, what do we, you know, we put our heart and soul into this. And, you know, that hurts when, when, when you work so hard. But then what comes out of it is, is something like that. But Cindy, you know, my stepmom's like, I can't wait to see what the Lord has for you. And because I got let go, I was able to find a job out here in Hawaii. I would never have applied for the job out here. And I applied for like 20 different jobs. And this is the only job that called me back. And I was, you know, that, that they were interested in me and it's the only job I wanted. And, and it's what I've wanted for a long time too. So I worked for FEMA for like, let's see, five years as a reservist. And I would go to different disasters, different states, and I'd work for a year. So it's like project management. So I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do until I was about 27. It's so tough. And it's funny because like, you might get really excited about something and then you're like, okay, I'm going to focus on this. And then you might say, well, maybe, maybe I want to focus on this more, but that hard work and experience you can take over, you know, you can kind of leapfrog it. And, and, and so, yeah, you might, maybe you might think like, ah, oh, am I doing what I really want to be doing? And maybe at the time you're not able to do it right away, but, uh, but eventually, you know, you can work towards it. Just like any goal, like if you're an artist, like, okay, I want to paint, but I have to have a nine to five for right now. You know, it's like, yeah. you can kind of just, you can kind of just use those to, to build up to get to that point. But um, yeah, I, I was, I was 27. I always wanted to be like in business or, or, you know, I, I helped my dad, uh, finance, uh, uh, financial planning and then like taxes. And then, uh, and then, and then I started, then I, you know, being a, a server, you know, being a waiter at a restaurant. I mean, that's a great job, by the way, you could get cash, you know, like every day. And yeah. Eventually I was just like, I guess I just want to do project management. I think that that's like a good uh, example of all those things combined. And then, and then uh, just being diligent with school. I was able to get good grades and I was like the, and I was the, the commencement speaker and everything. I don't know if I had the very best score, but I did graduate with a 4.0. And I'll tell you, I had a really hard time in, in high school and, and, and even college when I first started. But eventually, like, you have to sacrifice, you know, you have to be diligent and you have to, like, sacrifice your time now in order to, to achieve that. You know, I wasn't good at school. You know, it took me a while to, like, really learn how to be good at, at test taking or, or just studying. But sometimes it takes – sometimes it's really easy for people, right? They just shoot through and they're, they're there. But other times it, you got to struggle. But being able to struggle like that every day and, like, getting better at struggling so I wasn't struggling as hard the Lord the Lord blessed me perfectly because when I finally graduated from my bachelor's degree I went right it was like uh, a year before I um, started the work with FEMA and I went to school as a project manager and now here I am instead of instead of spending people's money I'm giving them their money back you know I'm re reimbursing them so it was kind of like this this mirror this flip of it but it, you know, it's the same skill. It's just kind of like looking at, at another angle, but I was able to take that and use it exact, like directly into my work. And it's rare for people to go to school and use their degree for exactly what they do at their job, you know? Aloha, this is The Bear. We've been listening to my son, Jeremiah Wozniak, talk about his experience of riding an 85-foot wave. You know, we all have an appointment with powerful waves in our lives. Some are waves of adversity, some are waves of opportunity, some are both. 
But no matter what happens, we need to be preparing now to ride that big wave when it comes. We want to invite you to go to my website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our email. If you do, you get a free audio version of the book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. A great book to challenge and inspire you, as well as to read and to listen with your family. We will be right back with more of this special version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak adventure and our TV episodes Long Ride Home the instant we produce them months before they even air. Plus we give you all kinds of free stuff. Coffee cups, t-shirts and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. D. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide Bear Wozniak. We're listening in on a conversation that my son Jeremiah had with Heather Makowick. She's the founder of Peak Encounter Ministries and a young graduate named Ava about lessons that he learned riding an 85-foot wave and how they can apply those uh, inspirations, challenges, and experiences to their everyday lives. Please support our ministry, by the way, if you become a Patreon donor. Go to patreon.com, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure, and if you subscribe there, you get early access to the Long Ride Home TV show, and you get all seasons past to the TV show, which is, by the way, a tally award-winning show, and also early access to all of our Bear, Bear Wozniak Adventure uh, radio shows, the video uh, version of those. So let's listen in now as Jeremiah continues telling his tale of riding a huge 85-foot wave. When you were a kid, you had practiced bombing down hills on skateboards. Yeah. Since you were a kid, you wanted to ride big waves. Yeah. And you trained in bigger and went bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger surf. This is similar to the preparation that you were talking about. Yeah. For your career. You just you, you bombed big big skateboard hills. You 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 surfed Waimea without a leash at twenty four feet, it's forty feet. Um, it's a good surf, way to bring it back. But yeah. then it, it, it share the experience of the abandonment that you felt. Share the experience of the, the first wave where you had to kick out and then just let, let them feel what that was like. Yeah, it's, it was like, I think, I, I, I can remember, and I, I love surfing, I fell in love with surfing, and uh, I, I, re I read like this new study, they said that if you look at the ocean, it activates like a part of your brain that has to do with healing. It's like, wow, that's really cool, you know? It's like, it's so peaceful when you're just looking at the water, the ocean, like that. So for some reason, when I was a kid, I just latched on to sports, like I just loved always being active like any sport that was under the sun I wanted to do and and I would be and I would I would love doing it and I just pushed myself so far you know weirdly I don't know why but I just would always just try to go to the next step but um in high school I remember I found this um this picture of of, of Waimea Bay you know the big wave spot in the north shore of Hawaii and my dad it, uh, recorded a couple uh, ESPN documentaries on the big wave um, contest, the Eddie Cal big wave contest. He ended up working for Eddie's brother, Clyde. <laughs> so, yeah, so <laughs> All my like, sons did, yeah. So I just kind of, you know, grew, grew up on that. And then I remember, like, I found the Surfer magazine, and I, and I ripped out the page, and I put it in my binder, and it was just this really big wave. And then, uh, and then I just told myself, like, one day I'm going to surf these big waves. Like, I'm just going to do it. And I was really scared, you know. I'm like, how am I ever going to get to that point, you know. Like, this is insane. And uh, – but I just told myself one day I would do that. So I would train when it got big. I'd just try to push myself and, and just, you know. And, and you're alone. It's just, it's just you, you know. I mean, you can have buddies out there and stuff or friends that are kind of along the same lines, but – it's just really just you and what you, if you try your best, you know, like that's, that's what it's really all about. So one day 
um, I was able to go and and I told and I was trying to find people that would take me out surfing because th they would say no, you know, it's too dangerous. And um, you mean tow and surfing? Yeah, tow surfing on on the big big days. So you know when you get the jet ski and they tow you and and they're like, yeah, it's it's too dangerous. You know, like they have they train together. These are like partners that trust each other. You know, with their lives, and I didn't really know anyone. Looks like, like it's that. like crazy. Todd says when you go out on a day like that, um, he's one of my best friends here. You all already make the decision that you're going to die, uh, but your your partner on the jet ski, you have a hook on the back of you. You wear a vest, and there's a hook there that he will pull you back on the bully board. It's like a huge boogie board on the back of the ski, and he'll revive you. But you got to either you got to decide you're willing to die. Oh, so, yeah. You have to be. You have to know that that your life's in jeopardy. So all your training, all your years, and it's not just physical; it's mental. A lot of it is mental, you know, because you have to be willing to not hesitate. You have to just fully commit. And if you hesitate, then that's when bad things happen. Yeah, yeah. So you have to have that mentality, and that's why I think a lot of crazy people do big wave surfing. <laughs> like they actually kind of are a little crazy. So my friend Crazy Todd, he's like, I'll take you. I'll take you big wave. <laughs> I was like, all right, you know, and, and um I was I was doing some some school work that day and he called me up about one o'clock and he said, You like to catch the big one. You go, I you said, like go big. Yeah, you like to go big, you like catch the big one today. I said, Yeah. So I drove down there. You know, I didn't think I was gonna be doing this that day, but the three years prior to this, I was surfing the North Shore. Like every day as much as I could and I was going out in these these big waves that were you know pretty big for me and you keep conditioning and you just keep mentally preparing but that day I went there and, and all the lifeguards like the Brazilian lifeguards and, and all the locals are like oh it's too big to surf because what happens is eventually the wave like if you watch on on the on the videos and stuff you'll see the wave kind of curl like that you know and you can kind of ride it but this day it was just dumping like a whole wall. Yeah, just, just a whole wall. So if you took off, it was just, it would just break. It was crazy. Like when I was working for FEMA in 2015, I met the guy who was the, the second in command for all of the Pacific for the Coast Guard. And he said, and he was talking about living out here. And I said, Oh, you remember this one day on December 3rd, 2007. And he's like, it's like, yeah, there's a hundred foot waves that day on the radar. I've never seen anything like that. So I was like, wow. And this is his first day to actually tow in. It's yeah, on the, the biggest day, day in 50 yeah. years. So so everyone's saying it's too big to, to, to go out. And then my friend Crazy Todd's like, I know just the spot. And I'm like, what? Of course he does. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. Are you sure about this? And he's like, yeah, don't worry. It'll be perfect. And then uh, we, we go out through the channel where the harbor is and – and we finally make it over these really big waves. Yeah, the, the, har the harbor's supposed to be safe, right? It's a deep channel. Yeah. The uh, harbor buoys were underwater. Yeah, the harbor was, was breaking. <laughs> yeah. And finally we get out, maybe like a quarter of a mile out there, uh, half a mile. And I say, Todd, can I have a float coat now? Like, he didn't even give me my life vest yet. Mm -hmm. Here, you should probably use two of them. And yeah, now you could, they have these, these, these things you could pull, and it fills up with air, and you float to the surface. But this was before they had they Which had can be that. good or bad if you use that at the wrong time. The wave will just pick you up like a cork and just launch you, right? If you have your first yeah. wipeout and you use it too soon, the next wave will just throw you. So having a life jacket isn't always the best idea either, right? You want to go yeah. deep when, when you wipe out. Yeah. So we were, paddle we were on the jet ski going out, and we keep going out, and – there's these big waves coming like they're going to break on us. And I'm like, Todd, you see these waves? Like, we should go out farther so it's not going to break on us. And he's like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. And then a big wave came, and he had to go right at it, you know, because as the wave's coming, before it breaks, you want to get past it, right? So when there's bad – when it gets big, you don't run towards the shore. You have to go out. you got to go, you right go face it. that monster and try to get over and beyond. It's, it's yeah. counterintuitive, right? Yeah, because if it breaks and you're going right at it, then you're in real trouble, and then you have to turn around and try to outrun it. But when the water breaks, there's a lot of oxygen in the water, so the jet skis can't go as fast. It cavitates. It doesn't have water for the jet. It's just a lot of bubbles, so it can actually yeah. stall it. Yeah. So we finally get out there, and we're surfing, and we're 
I catch my first wave and my foot falls out of the board and it's, I'm basically like one foot Okay, in. so so the the jet ski board when you ride big waves you you use elephant guns or rhino chasers we call them. But when you're towing that's just big so you can catch it. When you go to tow in now you have shorter boards and they have actual foot straps you put in as you drop it in. Yeah. But he had never even used this board, never towed in before and you're your back foot bit go in the well, strap or what happened? Well, I, I had towed on like a really small day and I used to wakeboard, you know, so it's really <laughs> similar. <laughs> so, so kind of back to the point before, it's like, you know, if, if you focus on something and you can use that skill to take into like what you find you really want to do, right? So yeah. when I was a kid, I would wakeboard. I never thought I would be toe surfing because this is before they ever invented toe surfing. You know, this was like, I was a kid like in 96 and stuff doing this. And then, uh, so finally, the way the way that I caught my foot kind of slipped out of it, and the wave wasn't that big. I mean, it, it was. It was, it was only it forty five feet. It was pretty oh, big. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty big, and, and then the <laughs> other guys came out and they followed us out, and there we were all surfing this kind of this inside shop. So eventually, Todd's like, "Okay, you want to go and get the big one now?" And I'm like, "What? This isn't the big one." <laughs> use use it the way he would say it. Yeah, he's like, you like go big, and I and I sat there, <laughs> and I had to like, it took me about a minute to respond to him, because I really had to set myself in my mind and not just say yeah sure, but I had to be like, okay, now's the time I can do this. I'm gonna be focused. I'm gonna get over my fear now, and I have to kind of face my potential death now, so that when I'm actually surfing, I can just not even think about it. So I, I weighed the options, you know, and I'm like, you know, this is this is it. I got to do it now. So then we had to go out about – we were out about two miles because as the, as the water – as the shelf starts to get deeper and deeper and deeper, that means that the waves start breaking farther and farther out, the, the bigger they are. So if it was a little wave – it wouldn't break until it hit the shore, right? Because that's where the, it gets shallow and shallow enough where the wave can crest. But since the waves are so big, we had to be out two miles out. And it was, it was crazy because um, kind of back to the point before, you don't really see the wave. Like you, I mean, you can see this monster of, of – it's like when you see the, the boats out at sea in the big waves, they kind of go up really slow and then they crest down the other side. But on the other side, sometimes you're falling, 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 falling until you actually come back up. So that's kind of what it was like. So when the, they call them Hey, Hey, Nalu mountain waves. So when that big wave came and um, my friend Todd started towing me, you don't really see it to the point where it's going to start forming up you know, and really start jacking up to get to that apex or that pinnacle. So you're on this mountain of water, but you don't, it's so big, you don't really feel where that crest is going to be. And that's where I had to trust my friend to tow me to that right spot. And he said, I'm going to go really fast. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of turn the jet ski. So as I'm turning, it's going to whip you into it. It's going to throw you. Accelerate you. But he's like, don't let go because you're going to feel like you're going so fast. You think that you're going fast enough, but don't let go yet until I say to let go. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. You've been listening to my son Jeremiah talk about riding an 85-foot wave on December 3rd, 2007. It's one of the biggest days I've ever ridden in Hawaii. He just let go of the tow rope and is about to drop into a monster wave. So let's listen in. Stay with us to hear more of his exciting story. Join us on our quest to challenge and inspire men to manly virtue by joining our cause at deepadventure.com. You can check out our store that has warrior rosaries, the Catholic spiritual ammo kit, great books, and great t-shirts. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. All 
Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to especially invite women to be part of our pack. We are trying to do the hard thing. We're trying to reach our effort, our ministry is to reach men. So many women come up to me and say, finally, there's a ministry that the men in my life can relate to. Go to our website and become part of what we do. If you go to deepadventure.com and click on the Patreon link, you can be part of what we're doing. And you can receive a free mug and early access to our TV shows and our radio shows and really become a vital part of our ministry. So really invite the women to join with us in our effort. As we cut away on the last segment, my son Jeremiah was being towed into an 85-foot wave by our friend Crazy Todd Robertson's jet ski. Jeremiah had just let go of the tow rope and begun to surf into the biggest wave of his life. Let's listen in now as he continues to share with us what it feels like to abandon yourself to a hey hey nalu, a mountain wave, and how we can learn to abandon ourselves to God's will. Yeah. So, so I mean, the board's chattering, just, you know, and it's like, if I didn't have a board, maybe I could just be on my feet, you know, we're going that fast. And then eventually uh, he said, okay, let go. So I let go of the rope, and now it's just silent, basically. And it's still building, right, the wave? Yeah, the wave's slowly, slowly building. There's a good example of that. I think it's at the beginning of Riding Giants or one of those yeah. movies where, yeah, Riding Giants. where it just gets really quiet. And the jet ski, he took, he went over the wave. So now he's on the back side of the wave, kind of riding behind. So if this is the wave and I'm, I'm on this side, he's just on the jet ski, just barely up at the top of the other end. Right, riding, trying to guess where Jeremiah is, sometimes able to peek over to maybe see him. But yeah. his job is to try to parallel where he thinks Jeremiah is. Yeah, he can't really see me, but he can. And this wave just kept kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger beyond my imagination what I thought it would get that big so instead of dropping down the wave I started to turn a little bit and then I realized that the wave was still rising so I had to go back down I mean I was just going down the space this wave it felt like forever and and that's like one of the best moments of my life you know it was like so exhilarating but eventually this wave started to break and when it broke it was like thunder I mean it was like just like the loudest thunder that you'd hear, like right, like if the lightning broke right next to you. And I told myself, if I don't look back and look at the wave, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. So I turned back and I looked, and it's like looking into like, like the face of God or something. I mean, it was just like so incredible to see in person and to hear. It's just like cracking, 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 like, like if you, if you were just like the sound of like a, uh, like revelations, like, yeah, it's a like, voice like many waters. I've been there on Patmos where the, the voice like many, many waters spoke to John and the apocalypse yeah. and it broke, it split the cave into three. There's three places where the cave is split because of the father, son, and Holy spirit. But it's like that, a voice yeah, like many it's waters. Like if you, if thunder, there's like a giant voice of God, like two giant armies of like right when they class, just that, you know, it's like that, that, thrashing noise and it's like you know in the end times like you know the it's they say like when the lord comes back again that that his voice will be the his voice is what defeats the army right because he's speaking the truth speaking the gospel and and that's like all he's going to do is talk and that's kind of like what it was is like the sound of just like uh, you know it's it's just it just hit me hard so anyways it, it was and it was a big barrel Big, 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 big barrel. You could just look at it. You could put, I don't know how many trains and buses stacked on top of each other in there, but it was incredible. And then I'm going down the wave, and finally I start turning down the face of it, and I see the whole thing just like about a mile. I rode it for about a mile, but I did see like another mile in front of me, the wave. Now it's going to close out because we went from the outside reef to the, to the inside reef. So since it was so big, the inside was closing out, but the outside, it had that kind of a curl thing. So now I got to the inside where the whole thing is going to dump. And this part, I don't know how this happened. Like, I swear it's like a miracle. And Todd looked like he saw a ghost when he saw me after this. But what happened is I pushed all my weight on my back foot because since the wave was, was closing out, if I would have gone straight, it would have just like landed on me and
I saw it start to break over me and I like did like a Superman thing where I just punched <laughs> as hard as I could through the lip. And I don't know how, I don't know how it happened, but I punched out through the back. I think it's because the wave was so big that somehow how I got back into, I guess, the apex again. This time, though, I pushed out. I don't know how it happened, but it's almost like angels, Maybe a just, guardian pulled angel me, angels just pulled me straight out. And then the wave just dumped and just exploded a million pieces. I mean, it, it was so intense. And then uh, my friend Todd, I'm saying, Todd, Todd, I'm over here, you know, because he was down, he was far down on the jet ski. I'm like, I'm over here. And he looked at me, he's like, what? He's like, how did you get here? Like, he couldn't, he couldn't phantom it. I couldn't really either. I was just like, get me in. And there's me another the big ski. wave coming after that, right? So he like, put me on the jet ski, yeah. He's like, where's my board? I'm like, I don't care. Well, there's no leash. Yeah, oh, it, just, okay. it just took off. <laughs> so now, so now I, I went through the biggest wave of my life, and I saw, you know, like the face of God. I heard God, you know. It's like I went through this incredible moment. I'm back on the jet ski. And then he says, okay, now here comes another set. And we turn towards the ocean and we go over the first wave. And I saw about 50 waves that were stacking up higher than the last one. Infinity. So, yeah. so I could see like it's 50 foot. Then there's, then there's another row behind that that went up to 60 foot. Then I saw another row behind that. And I, I, I could have seen a 100 foot wave. I know at least I saw a 75 to 80 foot wave. And you're but, talking about measuring from the back, not the front. Yeah, so you're looking out the ocean, and the farther you look out, the higher the waves are getting. So, so it, it, was, it was like corduroys, and then the waves started breaking, and we had to take the jet ski and, and, and go up over the white water. So we're talking like 30-foot walls of white water. You know, after the wave so you breaks. You have to hit it really fast because it'll cavitate, right? Yeah, so you want to go fast at it, and then right when you're going to hit it, you, you – let off all the gas and then when the wave is about to hit you then you gun it and you're just going up this white water i don't know how we how we got over that but we must have gone over 20 or 30 waves like that and if you go too fast you'll launch off the top of the wave and you'll lose your jet ski <laughs> so finally the last wave breaks and this wave for some reason, we went too fast, and I fell off the back, and I actually pulled Todd off by accident. And uh, he, this guy's like, he's crazy, Todd. He's always being silly. You know, he's never serious. He'll say something, you know, just to get a reaction. But this time is the first time I've ever seen him serious. He swam as hard as he could to get when, the jet when, ski. When you go off the jet ski, you have a lanyard. It turns off the jet ski, right? When you fly off. It automatically turns off the ski, but he's still yeah. got to get to it before so the next wave I pulled him off. The jet ski's over there. He's swimming as fast, as hard as he can. I've never seen him so serious in my life. I was like, wow, he can actually be serious. <laughs> so then he grabs the jet ski. He starts it. Thankfully, it starts. I get back on it, and now we, we have to go find the surfboard. And we had to go into the impact zone, and, and, and uh, we somehow the board was there. We found it. We put it on the jet ski, and then uh, – we were able to make it past a few more waves. and um, But I'll never forget the look when I was taking off on the wave at the top. And then I'll never forget the look when we went over that first wave and I just saw all these waves stacking up, stacking up. And it was like, it was like kind of a bluish color. There was like a greenish color. Then it was like a dark green. Then it was like a gray. Then it was like a black. It was like this like, this the worse the and water. worse and worse yeah. and worse, yeah. these waves stacking up. So I can I can say Todd said that it was at least a uh a, a thirty-five to forty foot wave, which is like an eighty foot wave. But he says that he says at the, least the backside is how surfers will measure them. Yeah. Most people can, think of the front. Yeah, so they'll say it's a two foot wave, but it's really four foot. And and he said it was at least thirty-five. He said maybe forty-five. But he said at least that size. So in my mind, I, I would say, like, I could, I could safely say it was an 80-foot wave, but I think it was bigger. I think it was maybe 90-foot. Maybe, maybe I got the 100-foot wave. I don't know. But the waves that I saw after that that looked so big were smaller than the wave that I had caught. So it was just, like, it was incredible. But we had to go back to the port or back to the harbor 
and we're going, the sun's setting, and we're going over these waves, and, and we're barely making it back to the harbor, and then we get to the harbor, and we want to go, and normally it's deep water. It's really safe. So I, so I see, I'm, I'm up there. I, yeah, but I, this time you're I, I go up to the harbor, and I go, Joshua, where's Jeremiah? He goes, I don't know, Dad. They disappeared as soon as they went out. I've never seen anything like this in my life, and I always hear these horror stories at nighttime. The surfers be, can't get in because it's so big, and they have to spend the night kind of paddling outside waiting for the daytime and I got oh no and then I see the jet ski show up and I only see Todd I don't see Jeremiah on it I'm like oh no I thought I did couldn't see him yeah I was on the back there and and the channel the harbor it's really deep so the boats can come in and out but this time it was actually breaking in the harbor which is just incredible I mean I've never I know there is a one of my my brother's friends who's from here was up on a cliff watching that day. And he's like, yeah, I've never seen it that big in my life, you know? And they've had stories, you know, like in 1969, there was a giant swell. Big there, Wednesday. There was one, I think, in the 80s, the late 80s or something. But there's always different characteristics to it. It might be the same size, but it's, it's going to be like a different swell direction or a different tide, different time of the year, you know? So anyway, so we finally make it into the harbor. And, and we get past that, that last mile, and right when we get to the, the boat launch, the ramp, we run out of gas. <laughs> Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back listening to my son Jeremiah talk about the feeling of riding an 85-foot surf and the spiritual and life lessons that he learned. Go to our Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and subscribe, and don't forget to ring the little bell so you get notified. So you'll be the first to receive new content and that will inspire you and that you can use to share with your friends. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want you to visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter. And as a gift to you, you'll receive the free audio version of my latest book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. We're back listening right now to my son Jeremiah talk about surfing an 85-foot wave and what life and spiritual lessons he learned through that experience. We're going to jump into a conversation that he was having with Heather Markowitz of Peak Encounter Ministries and a young graduate, Ava. Yeah, so I think, like, I guess from my experience, it's like you have your goal. It doesn't matter, like, you know, when you first start focusing on it, if you're young or maybe you're older, but you have that goal. And then you, you have to, like, you know, challenge yourself to get to that point, like thinking, like, what it's going to take for me to work hard enough to get there. So I'm ready on that day, right? So I'm ready. When, you know, when I you're... want to better myself as much as possible so that if, if I don't achieve that, it's not my fault. It's just whatever, whatever outside sources it was. But if I better myself and I know I tried my hardest and I don't do it, then that's okay. But if I didn't try my hardest, I didn't work my way there, and that day comes and I'm not quite good enough, then I know I need to go back and I need to better myself even more, right? I just go back and, yes. So, so that, in that regard, yes, you want to better yourself. You want to make the sacrifices for, you want to set yourself up for, the, for in a good way, right? You don't want to set yourself up in a bad way. <laughs> you sacrifice, you work on yourself now, so on that day you set yourself up for success, but... Also, just like the big wave, you don't know what part of that wave, you know, like where that pinnacle or the apex is going to be. So you just got to have faith that as long as, as long as you're just on that path and you're holding on to that goal or you're holding on to what, you know, because you know that path that the Lord has for you. You know, you can feel it. I mean, you, you kind of learn how to hear it better and better mm -hmm. your heart, but I think a lot of it has to do with your heart. Like, what do you feel? Like, what do you, what do you most feel? What's your gut? But uh, knowing, okay, I'm on God's path. I'm just going to hold on to this. And, you know, as Todd's turning and you're just holding on, you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, can I do this? Can I make this? You know, and then it's like, all right, now it's your time to launch. 
even when I was going down that wave, I didn't really know if it was the bottom of the wave. And I started turning to the right. And I'm like, no, I actually got to keep going down. So even when you're on God's wave and he put you there, you still might kind of be a little unsure about it. Mm. And, and maybe like, uh, you know, uh, an example of the first wave, my foot slipped out. You know, maybe you're not on your best foot at that time. But it's like, even though you're on his path, and you kind of sense it, you know, it's like such a big thing that you don't really know where you're at, but you just keep focusing on the fact that, you know, you're hundred percent committed and you're ready for this. You're ready yourself. Then, then, you know, that's it. You just, you just keep doing that. And, and eventually that wave is going to show itself and you're going to turn back and see God and just feel him in your life like that. You know, one more thing about that is, um, it's interesting. I just thought of that just now is that, um, when you look forward, it's so, everything's uncertain, right? You don't know what the future holds. But what I tell myself is like when I'm, when I'm anxious or, or I have, you know, fear in the future, all I tell myself is to look back. And when you look back at your life and you see how the Lord's brought you through so many tough times and like how he's protected you for and things over, that didn't make sense over those start many to make times, sense. Yeah. then you see like, oh, course he's been here this whole time look at everything that he's done before you know so it's kind of like a reassurance in your future faith where you're like well i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep going but that's cool like i never thought of that looking back and seeing what he's been doing or what where he puts you in your life and there's like, a voice wow. there, there, there's a scripture verse that so, says and there will be a voice behind you shouting this is the way follow it so again that thing about uh, the, the voice of god and the voice of god is a creative voice you know, his, his voice is what makes, right. What makes it. The other thing is that that summer, Jeremiah was always training for big waves. That summer we had a little bit of fun together. We would paddle out here in Waikiki, dive down about 12 to 15 feet and grab a boulder and run underwater, which is a way to build cardio, yeah. learning how to hold your breath while you're running. Try it sometime. <laughs> the other thing is big wave. People ask me, what does it take to be a big wave rider? And I'm not, a, I ride in big waves, but I'm not a big wave rider where people just live for that. But I know, like, I had the 20-20-20 rule. You should be able to dive down 20 feet and grab a boulder and run underwater. You should be able to paddle your surfboard for 20 miles without stopping, where you really have no business going out. And also in Hawaii, there's the tradition of being at, at, at sunrise or sunset especially, of holding your breath during the sunset from the time the, the, the sun hits the ocean till the time it sinks and, and praying. So I always say that's the 20-20 rule for big wave riding which is what Jeremiah's been saying about how you need to prepare for that moment. And I always challenge people, the 2020 rule, 2020, 20 rule is that 60 minutes of prayer every day. Maybe it's 20 minutes, liturgy, the hours, 20 minute mass, 20 minute rosary. But if you're not spending an hour every day with the Lord, there's an appointment coming. And if you're not ready for it, you're going to miss out on the opportunity of your lifetime. You know, like, when, you, when you're bettering yourself, you're preparing yourself, and you're walking in faith, when your mind agrees with your heart, like when you can have faith in your heart and your mind at the same time and that comes together, you're unstoppable. And, and when you get to the – you might like um, – there's a, so many scripture verses where it's like, you know, go there, do not be afraid, and, you know, like come, come in my name. And let's say like with the lions, you know, Daniel and the lions, that it's like, in your regular brain, you'd be so afraid to be with these lions, but like when you're actually there in that moment, and you're and you're you're standing firm with your heart and your mind, and, and you're in the spirit of the Lord, those miracles happen. I mean, little miracles can happen every day, I believe. And and if and if you and if you look at it, if you look at it like, well, I'll never get there, or this position, let's say you have a job, and it's like, oh, it's already filled, or it's never going to happen. It's like. It might not be. It might not look like that until the day you're actually there, and then the miracles mm -hmm. happen. And God often redirects. You know, you don't know. You have certain plans, and preparing for that that yeah. puts you in. Like, how many times have you paddled for a big wave and you miss it? Yeah. But then all of a sudden you go, oh, missing paddling this way, and then paddling that way to get into that wave. I missed it, but it put me in the perfect position to catch the next wave. Yeah. So so often you're you're you're. Yeah. You're pursuing God's will. You're pursuing the desires of your heart, which God puts there, the new and right desires. And then, oh, you miss it. And you go, I blew it. And then all of a sudden you realize, but you did all that you could and yeah. should. 
that may just be positioning to you for exactly. the next thing. The last the thing next, about, and the next way it might be better. Because riding waves, how when it's bigger, you can see people from the shoreline can see how big the wave is because of the surfer carving on it. Otherwise, they may not have any sense of dimension. But what's the greatest thing every surfer wants to do is be locked into the barrel, right? And that and that and that's the ultimate uh, em emphasis for our life is to be hidden in Christ so that no matter what we're doing, people see Jesus, not us. Yeah. But they see Jesus because of us, right? They see yeah. Yeah. he's manifested. Is there, and then I'll, but yeah, I, I wanted to, one more thing that I wanted to say was really important to me is, is how he's saying, like, uh, you know, you might be going for that wave and then you miss it. Like, I've learned in my life that if, if you don't have a, like, let's say, like if you're sailing and you say, I see that island over there, I want to shoot towards that, towards that island. You have a goal and you have a, a way to go. And the Lord can use, you know, like the wind, he's blowing in your sails and you're pointing there. But if you didn't have a rudder and you were just out floating around, then you're never going to get anywhere. So, like, let's say you're, you have a goal to get to the island. And then once you're getting to the island, you realize there's a better island right here, right next to you. Like, oh, this is even better. It's like as long as you have that goal, you might not, you might not achieve it, but you have direction and you have that mm -hmm. rudder. Have, you have some direction in your life, and then the Lord can use the winds to, to put you where he wants you. And the other yeah. thing is it, it brings back to the point of uh, prudence. People think of prudence as being a, a counter, the virtue of prudence being a counterpoint to, for, to coraggio, uh, fortitude, right? Like it's one or the other. How do you balance the two? No, prudence is the uh, charioteer of the virtues. It guides all of the virtues. And you don't need to be prudent if you're just going to be sitting on the couch, right? Prudence is meant for bold people. And Jeremiah Train, he knows how to read waves. He knows there's a pre-flight checklist of a, for the jet ski. I remember when they had the first towing contest. I was with Archie Kalepe, the head lifeguard of Maui. They were checking the jet skis to make sure everything was working right. So um, there's this thing about the virtue of prudence. Read the waves. What's the swell direction? When's the high tide? When's dark? Is, there, is it jet ski filled? You have to have the virtue of prudence, but it's not meant for prudish people to sit on the couch and do nothing. If you're a Christian and you're not being bold, you are a, uh, it doesn't fit. You know, it's like the, the lukewarm Christian, you know, I'll vomit you, I'll explode vomit you is the word out of, your, out of my mouth. If you're a Christian, God's going to call you to be bold, but prudence has to guide that boldness. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. You've been listening to my son, Jeremiah Wozniak, share his experience of riding the biggest waves he's ever ridden. He rode an 85-foot wave back on December 3rd, 2007. You know, God has great ways for you to ride, too. Waves of the Holy Spirit that will empower you and propel you into the, the plan that he has for your life. Our creed at Deep Adventure Ministries is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com.